Our next guest, and we appreciate you, Zach Kiefer, who covers all things Colts for The Athletic. Busy, busy month for you. We've got B.J. Odulari, who don't, if you think, B.J., that I didn't see you stride for stride, step for step, chasing down Anthony Richardson, who broke a combine record, the fastest edge rusher alive. Next. We're into April, baby. That means it's time for these college studs to take the next step and level up to the NFL. We're going to introduce you to some of these guys, and I could not be more excited to welcome our next guest. He is an LSU alum, one of the top-ranked pass rushers in this year's NFL draft. He finished his LSU career with 16 and a half sacks and on some really prolific quarterbacks, too. And this past season, he was named first team All-SEC. Please welcome LSU defensive end, B.J. Ojulari! Hey, how you doing? I'm great. Not as good as you, though. What are your days like right now leading up to this draft? Is it stressful? Are you trying to keep it calm? Yeah, I'm trying to keep it calm. Uh, you know, meetings, going to have some top 30 visits coming up pretty soon. And just, you know, trying to stay in shape, getting ready for a rookie minicamp. I love that. But you still have time to somehow watch and cheer on your Tigers because big night last night. Congrats to the LSU women's basketball team. They win their first national championship. You were tweeting about it. How proud are you, are you of these women? Uh, I'm so proud, especially, you know, all they had to overcome this year, all the stigmas, you know, early on. Um, but I think they did a great job. Uh, they went to the tournament with a chip on their shoulder, and they definitely prevailed. So it's a great win for LSU. Um, you know, great head coach and Kim Mulkey. And, uh, you know, we're just excited down here in Baton Rouge just to celebrate them. Yeah, we, we all love it. We're wishing them luck. We've got the rest of the Final Four. The men are up tonight between SDSU and uh, UConn. We'll see how that plays out. But we want to talk about you, BJ. You had your pro day at LSU. I know that you've been dealing with a bit of a hamstring injury. You've been very open and candid about it. Tell everyone how you were feeling and how you feel you performed last week. Um, yeah, I wasn't feeling 100%, but I just still wanted to go out there, show the scouts that I'm still explosive and, you know, that I wanted to be out, out there. Uh, you know, I tried to do some drills, tried to do the L drill, um, didn't feel the best, so, you know, I just cut it short right there. Uh, but I think my tape speaks for itself, the, my explosive ability and playmaking ability as well. Now, before last season, you made a switch in your jersey number, which I have to ask you about. What is the significance of number 18? What did it mean to you that you were awarded that number? Yeah, being number 18, it mean, it really means a lot to me. It means the world to me, really, and my legacy. Uh, my, my biggest thing is uh, leaving a legacy behind that, you know, for, for years to come, they're going to remember my name. So being number 18 is just a testament to the player's character. Um, how they carry themselves on and off the field, and just the way that they handle their academics and everything that they do on a leadership standpoint. So it was definitely a great opportunity to wear number 18 and represent the state of Louisiana and all the number 18s that came before me. It's so well said, and congratulations on that. We cannot wait to have you in the NFL, unless you're, of course, a quarterback in the NFL, and then, oops, sucks to be you. Uh, listen, we have a friend over at PFF. They do all the analytics, all the numbers. His name's Mike Renner, and he runs things over there, and a lot of GMs, a lot of scouting programs look at this stuff. He claims that you have the deepest bag of pass rush moves in this draft. How deep is that bag? Uh, I think the bag is real deep. Uh, you know, just being able to learn from the best, uh, playing with the best, going against the best in the SEC. So the bag is real deep. I have a lot of moves for different type of tackles. And, you know, that's what it is. It's just a mind game on that field, a game within a game. Now, we had, we, I had Dwight Freeney on. He's probably going to the Hall of Fame. We had him on the show a couple weeks ago. We know he's got that spin move. That is has patented stuff. What is your patented move? Uh, I'll say I'll, I'll set, it, set my, my ghost rush up with a long arm. So I'm going to hit that long arm with you and then, when I feel like it's time to use Show it, me, I'm going to stick it out there. <laughs> Show me a little bit. Teach me. So once I'm going, I'm, I'm going to stab you and keep what? stabbing you for a couple a couple uh, rushes. And then when I when I stab you and you shoot your hands, I'm going to take it away and, and dip under you. Oh, sorry, quarterbacks. And listen, <laughs> I know Bryce Young. I know Anthony Richardson, they've gotten that smoke, but we'll get to that in a minute. But listen, beyond your versatility with your moves off the edge, you can slide inside on passing downs, too, and make you make guards look so stupid. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I like just showing my versatility. Uh, Coach House does a great job mixing it up, putting us in the best position uh, to win our one-on-one -on -one matchup. So uh, I definitely like sliding inside, you know, creating something new inside and, you know, using my speed against one of a, a heavier guard or, or slower guard. 
Uh, I'm just not sure there's anything that you can't do up front. And I think it's important to say that. So I want everybody watching this to know that in drafting you, that they're getting a complete player, a total complete player. Is there a position or is there a strength that you want everybody to know about out there watching? Uh, yeah, I just want to, know, to everybody to know that uh, my playmaking ability, of course, everyone knows I can pass us, but I can definitely create plays behind a line of scrimmage, get TFLs in the run, and, you know, uh, you know, just set us up, you know, for third down and long. So I just want everybody to know that I can also play the run, set hard, strong edges, and get after it. Now, you led the entire SEC. That is not easy. You led the entire SEC in quarterback hits last season. You faced three of the top quarterbacks in this year's NFL draft, my friend, Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, and Will Levis. And you've hit them all. You've got your hands and paws all over them. So let's have some fun with this. I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to tell me the answer uh, is Young, Richardson, or Levis. Who was the most satisfying to get a hit on? To get a hit on? Uh, definitely Bryce Young, Heisman winner. So uh, that was definitely most satisfying. Is it because he's a Heisman winner or why? He's slippery. Yeah, he's slippery. One, he's slippery. He's hard to sack. Uh, he's the Heisman winner. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just Bryce Young. And he plays for Alabama, so. Oh, <laughs> just a yeah. little of that. I like that, I like that yeah. answer. Which of these three are you most excited to play against in the NFL? Uh, against, definitely, uh, probably Anthony Richardson. Uh, I just want to see, you know, his athletic ability flourish. Uh, obviously not against the team I'm on, but uh, I just want to see, you know, uh, you know, all the great things that he can do, uh, not just as an athlete, but as a quarterback. Which quarterback would you most like uh, to play with in the NFL? Uh, play with, uh, you know, I, that can go for all three, really. Um, I think all three are great quarterbacks. They did some amazing things against us, uh, and they're all great and different in their own way. BJ, you would play with Bryce Young? Yeah, I'll play with Bryce Young. <laughs> uh, who's, the, who's the quarterback who chirps the most? These quarterbacks in the NFL always talking. When you get your hands on these guys and you've sacked all of them in your college mm -hmm. career, who talks the most? Uh, who talks the most? Uh, I want to say they really don't, you know, talk too much. They they let their game talk. They're always talking to their offense or or something like that. Uh, when I remember playing all three of them, they 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 really didn't say a word. So last, we were watching this in our 5.30 a.m. meeting. I told you this in the commercial. It's a bunch, you know, we're all, I haven't had my coffee yet, I'm whatever, and we roll the highlight of the last play of the half against Florida this year. Anthony Richardson, who just set a combine record for speed at the quarterback position, Mr. 4-4 speed, fastest combine. Uh, he, you know, rolls out, it's a Hail Mary situation, and you are, you are, in step with him at your size. Can you take him if it came down to it in a race? Do you think it could be him? Uh, can I take him in a race? Yeah. Would you uh, beat Anthony I Richardson? <laughs> I think I can. Uh, you know, when you're racing somebody, you've you got to hear a different gear, especially when you're chasing somebody. Uh, so I remember the play you're talking about. So when you're when you see a quarterback and you're chasing them, I don't know what it is, but you're gonna you're gonna hit another gear and you know, get go just a little faster. You have this next level speed. I mean, you closed in on him. You, you forced him to chuck the ball out of bounds. It was unbelievable. Uh, now you have a, uh, a bit of a legacy thing going on here because your brother Aziz, he was a standout linebacker, Georgia Bulldogs. He was drafted by the Giants in 2021. He is an absolute stud. What made you decide to choose LSU over following in your big bro's footsteps to Georgia? Yeah, LSU, it really just felt like the place I needed to be. Uh, I took a visit, it felt like home. The way they recruited me, they nonstop, nonstop recruitment. And I just felt like going to LSU was the right decision and I can accomplish all my goals at LSU. And uh, really the culture, um, the city that I, I've been introduced to of Baton Rouge, uh, it's, it's only been great to me. So yeah. especially being able to wear number 18 and continue my legacy. Uh, at LSU, I definitely think I made the right decision and the best choice. BJ, was your brother mad? No, nah, he wasn't mad. Uh, he wanted me to come to Georgia, but he wasn't mad. He, he definitely supported me. Uh, he was the one who even encouraged me, you know, to, you know, check everybody out, look at look at uh, other schools as well. But even though he still wanted me to play for Georgia. Well, now he's going to champion you and going to the NFL, where he's a stud, by the way. He, ha you know, set the Giants record for sacks by a rookie with eight in 2021, wow. super impressive, and we're big fans of him on the show. What have you been able to learn from your brother about this time right now that you're going through, the draft process? Any pointers he's given you? Yeah, um, you know, he wasn't able to go to the combine because of COVID, but mm. pointers with interviews, you know, just knowing what to expect, 
uh, being able to cherish this moment, once in a lifetime opportunity as well. Um, and just, you know, take as much knowledge as I can from each interview and this whole process uh, going forward, you know, before, you know, I, I get drafted and hit the team, but definitely enjoy the moment. Now, VJ, I know he didn't make you go, he let you go to LSU, he wasn't mad at you, but he's on the Giants. And then I'm looking at your Twitter this morning, and your header is Lawrence Taylor. So, New York Giant legend. I had told you I had Dwight Freeney on. Dwight Freeney said that he, mm. that's who he would want to give him his speech and induct him into the Hall of Fame. Are you trying to manifest yourself to the Giants? Uh, you know, I, I'm just blessed to go wherever <laughs> I go. Uh, <laughs> I really didn't even think about that. Uh, uh, you know, Lawrence Taylor, he was one of the best pass rushers, so I've been putting him up there on my uh, on my Twitter um, bar right there. But... Um, Okay. You know, it wouldn't be bad to go reunite with my brother. Do you, do, you guys do you guys talk about it? Do you think about it? You don't have to play with each other to start your career. Look at the McCordys. They spent years and years apart. Then they ended up winning a Super Bowl together. You you know, you have the Watts. Do you, do you guys have that in your head? Are you manifesting eventually playing with your brother? Um, That's the thing. Uh, it, not really. Uh, everything with us is competition. We, we manifest, mm. you know, being better than each other. That's... I can't, I can't, <laughs> I don't, I don't really manifest, you know, it, if, if it happens, then that's a, you know, change the mindset, but everything that we do is competition. I manifest getting more sacks than him, uh, and I'm pretty sure he manifests trying to be better than me, so. Uh, <laughs> it's I a, like it's this. <laughs> I like this. Who's better? I'm better. <laughs> yeah, I figured you'd say that. <laughs> Aziz and PJ coming to an <laughs> NFL uh, rivalry near you. Now, I'm told that I'm speaking to royalty right now. What can you tell us about your famous grandfather who is so impressive? Uh, yeah, uh, his name is Twin77. He's a great artist, uh, very known musician, um, very just high status man, very respected back in Nigeria as well. Um, but, you know, he's a prince. Uh, it's just a, a symbol of, you know, status of, you know, how, how much respect that they have for him. But just being able to come from his bloodline and have his legacy uh, is a big part of our pride. And, you know, why we go so hard to push our, our last name and, uh, you know, create our own legacy. BJ, his artwork was featured in the National Museum of African American Art at the Smithsonian. That is mm. unbelievable. Like, tell me this. If there was one play from your career so far that you would frame and put up in the Smithsonian, what play is it? One play, uh, uh, I'll say um, when I sack, when I made a strip sack for Auburn uh, at, during the Auburn game for scoop and score touchdown, I'll, I'll probably put that one in the Smithsonian right there. All right, and we'll leave plenty of room in that hall at the Smithsonian <laughs> for your NFL plays. BJ Ojulari, we are so happy to know you, to meet you, and good luck, quarterbacks. Like, good luck, just good luck. He's going to chase you down. He's going to ruin your day. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you guys for having me. I appreciate you, too. We'll see you on the Giants, kid. All right. We'll be up here after the show. Uh, we have John Rostein. Big game tonight. Who will win the NCAA tournament? Oh, a fresh cut on Mr. Rostein. I see you. <laughs>